the fact that you guys are smart enough to, to add tax was really a great feature in my eyes there. So for those I've, of us- I've been following you for a long time. So what else can you, can you expect, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad someone's listening. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Welcome to the podcast. It's all about sales, funnels, and marketing automation. I am your host, Barry Moore, and this week, more cool stuff for you. If you have been in the online marketing space at all in the last few years, or even if you're in more traditional business and you've been doing online advertising at all, you have probably heard about Facebook ads. You've probably seen them many, many times as you're scrolling through your news feed. You'll see a Facebook ad of someone trying to drive you to content so that you can engage with their content or drive you to their landing page so you can see their offer. This week, we're not going to talk about that exactly, but we're going to talk about a much cleaner way that you can get traffic into your marketing automation system straight from Facebook. So no driving them to a landing page and then having to get them to convert on your landing page. We want their name and address details to go straight from Facebook right into your marketing automation system or your email service provider. So this week, we're going to be talking to Wilco DeCry from Connect Leads. We're going to talk about Facebook lead ads, which are a very specific type of Facebook ad, and how you can use lead ads and his piece of software called Connect Leads to create an advertisement on Facebook. And when the person says, click, yes, I want that, or click, yes, I'm interested, their name and email address goes straight into your autoresponder. No middleman, no CSV files, no nothing, straight into active campaign. And then you can follow up with any of your normal kind of sales uh, funnels or marketing automation that you may have set up behind the scenes to process that lead and, and try and turn them into a customer. So really interesting piece of software, really cool. I've tried it. Took me just a few minutes to get set up and had leads flowing straight into active campaign was pretty impressive. And I also want you to stick around to the end of the episode. I've got a very special offer for you at the end of this episode. So don't bail early, stay all the way to the end. I think you'll be interested in the special offer that we're going to talk about at the end of the episode. But before we get into talking to Wilco, we're going to do the shameless social proof segment. We haven't done one of these in a while, so we want to get back to it. This one is coming from the UK iTunes store for a change. This one is from Marcelo. He says, the best podcast of the year, five stars. One word, love the podcast. The information shared by Barry Moore and the experts on the show is fantastic. If you really pay attention and apply the tips, strategies, and techniques, you can change your business. Another thing that differentiates this podcast is that Barry shares tips, strategies, and techniques about active campaign. If you are an active campaign user, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Brilliant work, Barry. I can't wait for the next interview. God bless you. Well, thank you very much, Marcelo. You couldn't ask for a better review than that. So happy you're enjoying the podcast. So happy that we can put out information that helps people grow their business. I really love it. And that's what we're here to do. If you would like to leave a review of the podcast, please head over to iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud, wherever you consume the podcast. Leave us a review and I will read it out on a future episode. But now let's get into this week's main topic, which is Facebook lead ads with Wilco to Cry. All right, I'd like to welcome to the show Wilco to Cry from Connect.io and Connect Leads. How are you, Wilco? Hey, man, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm really doing well myself because I've been playing around with your tool all day the other day just to see how it works. And I find it fascinating. So I wanted to get you on to talk about it a little bit. And for people who don't know, we'll get into what that tool is in a minute. But it's all kind of based around Facebook lead ads, which I've only ever kind of heard about. I haven't had a chance to play with them. So I thought I'd get you on to talk about them a little bit more because I think they're just a game changer for getting new leads into your funnels, into your pipelines. So I guess the first question is, why use lead ads? 
basically the why Facebook introduced this feature, I think, is, is really for their mobile audience. I mean, their, their mobile audience is growing and growing. As I'm sure you know, right? There, there are like 655 million people who only use Facebook on their mobile, like never on their desktop, which is insane. And as I'm sure you know as well, is like the best way to, at least for me, like or for many businesses, to get people into your business is to funnel them into your business, right? So to collect their lead first and then uh, build a relationship, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is on a mobile device, people like people are doing stuff. They're on the road. They're, they're checking they're checking their phone just real quick. And if they see something interesting, they click on it. And usually they're not that into typing out their whole name and typing out their whole email address all on a tiny keyboard. And for Facebook, that's a problem because if an advertiser can make money from, from that mobile audience, they're not going to spend money on it. And like I said, for Facebook, that's a problem. And that's why they released this feature to make it easier for everyone, for all advertisers to collect leads, to collect someone's email address on a mobile device without them having to actually type in their email address. So what this new lead ad feature does, it's, it's a new feature from Facebook. And basically, if you click on it, instead of opening a website, it will automatically open up a pop-up and that will have all the information already written out. So it will, it will say the user's name, it will say the user's email address. Uh, you can even include things like gender or occupation and things like that. And Facebook will automatically pre-fill that. And then the only thing they need to do is tap once more and their email address is collected by Facebook. And this, this really lowers the barrier of, you know, collecting a lead it, instead of having to type it all in, having to wait for a page first, you know, on a mobile connection and then have to type it all in. Now they can just click on it. It will instantly open up inside the uh, inside the Facebook app. Um, and then, you know, one tap more and their email address is collected without doing any kind of typing. And I think that that's pretty much a summary of what a lead ad is and also why Facebook also created it. Yeah, I think I remember when Facebook first floated and I listened to a couple of podcasts about investing in, you know, share trading in the stock market. They were battering Facebook when they first went public about how they they just weren't monetizing mobile, like all their ad spend and stuff was on desktop. They weren't monetizing mobile. So so clearly that's a big priority for them. They've certainly seem to have, have cracked that game. And and that sector of people on mobile devices is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and and there's so many different form factors now, you know, is with the iPads and tablets and small phones, big phones. So I think it's super important that as part of your marketing mix that you are paying attention to how your ads show up on mobile. So there's lots of talk and lots of chatter around, you know, creating a landing page and then getting people to opt in and then following up with an email sequence. And that's all great if they're on a desktop or maybe even on an iPad, but Certainly, if they're on the phone, you bring up a good point there that that form factor for entering your name and email address on a phone has a lot more friction to it. People are probably going to go, oh, I don't have to type my email address on this stupid tiny little keyboard. So this is a way you can capture people without having them have to type in all that information because it's already stored in Facebook. They just say, hey, I want this, and they click on it, and Facebook pre-populates their name and their email address, and as you said, any number of other kind of data points on them. And you can grab that without having to have them type back in. I guess the other thing, too, is that's a much more useful email address, right? If it's the email address that they're logging into Facebook with, that's probably a much more valuable email address than some fake one they might want to give you just to get your lead magnet. Exactly, because Facebook already pre uh, already verified it when they signed up at Facebook first. <laughs> yeah, so, so I guess how do they differ from, you know, everyone's seen the normal Facebook ads, so... How do they differ from from just a normal Facebook ad? Well, on first sight, they like for from the audience perspective, they look similar. So they have like that, that same kind of image, the same size of an image as well. They have like the text above and they have like a title. So it all looks the exact same. And they have a little call to action button as well, uh, which you can do in a normal ad as well, right? You can say something like more information if you're uh, running ads, any kind of Facebook ad. Type. So on that sense, they look the exact same way. Uh, the only difference is that with a normal ad, if you click on it, they will it will open up a link, right? It will go to your website, so it will take them outside of Facebook. And if they click on a lead ad, they won't go to your to your site. They will it will immediately without loading. It will immediately open up that pop up with all that information. And then after they actually uh, click and and subscribe, then after they will, they will see a button where they can click to, onto your website. So basically, the difference is either they first go to the, to your website and then they may or may not enter their lead. And with this kind of ad, with the new lead ad, they will immediately see the form. They will opt in first and then they can go to your website. I think that's the uh, that's the easiest explanation of how they, these two differ. Yeah, I think that's the super important point. It's it's making that, that opt-in point, that moment of truth there where they're going to give you their name and their email as literally as frictionless as possible. Like they don't have to enter anything. They just 
they click that call to action button on the lead ad, their name and email address is already populated. All they have to do is go tap yes and bam, they've they've opted in. And then as you said, you can redirect them from there to a thank you page or maybe back to your Facebook page or wherever it is you want to redirect them from there. Exactly. So what kind of what kind of things can you use? Well, we've kind of covered the, you know, the traditional kind of, hey, I want to opt in for this free PDF, PDF lead magnet. What other kind of things can you use lead ads for? Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, that's obviously the most common thing, right? So basically, if people ask me, I say, well, basically everything that you can get every, someone else to opt in for as well. So, like I said, giving away an ebook or something like that. But you can also use it, for example, to let people sign up for a webinar. So you can say, hey, uh, run an ad, say, hey, you know, we have this workshop tonight at 8 p.m. or tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, click here to subscribe. And then if they click it, then instantly they'll get that opt-in form uh, and they will subscribe. So, yeah, basically the short, short, short answer would be everything that you would normally, that you could use an opt-in page for as well, uh, as long as you give something of value. I think that's the most important part. You have to give them something of value because people are still, even though it's really easy to, to, to submit, they still are submitting their email address and they know it. So you still have to give them something of value in order to make sure they actually want to subscribe. I think that's in them. Yeah, sure. I, I would, the, the point I was just trying to get across there is it's not just one thing. It's not just, hey, download this PDF. You can use it for you know free video training. You can use it, as you said, webinars. Lots of different scenarios where you can employ these lead ads basically just to get people to sign up for something, whatever that something happens to be. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there that call to action button, there's only a few different things that you can actually put there as a call to action. Is that right? Yep, there are like uh, from the top of my head, there are six, and actually change based on uh, which uh, which which country which language settings the user has. So that like in English, there would be apply now, download, get quote, learn more, sign up, or subscribe. So those are the six that will show up. Very cool. Yeah, and then so what happens to their information after they do that? So say I've seen your lead magnet, it's, you know, download this free guide to X Y Z. I'm saying yeah, I might want that, and I click on download my name and email is pre-populated there and then i click on okay or next or whatever the button says there and then boom i'm done where does that information go is the marketer how do i get my hands on that information yeah well basically facebook has uh when they when they release this feature they, they make sure you can everyone can access the data but like you like your first question was what happens if you subscribe well the short answer is actually Nothing. And that might sound a bit weird, but the thing is Facebook stores all that data, but the only way to get it is to uh, download a CSV file. So you'll have to go into your into your Facebook page and then you can download a CSV file with all the leads that you've captured so far. Now, obviously, if you're going to subscribe to an offer, you want to make sure that you get something right away. I mean, the first time I tested this out, I actually, I just figured, you know, I'll just export that CSV file once a day and import it into my autoresponder. So when I did that, obviously, I had people who signed up the day before and then the day after they got they got their welcome email where I promised something. And I got various emails, which was kind of surprised me, actually, saying like, hey, who are you? Like, oh, and so they like they didn't even remember that they subscribed the day before. Yeah. So that proves the point that you really have to make sure that to, to basically deliver to deliver whatever you promise to them right away, because an hour later it's over, or already less effective. So uh, if you're just using Facebook, then you'll have to download that CSV. You'll have to make sure that it's in the right format and upload it into your auto spawner. And you'll have to keep on doing that every single yeah hour or day, whatever you prefer, but at least as fast as possible. And for every single. Uh, lead form that you're running separately uh, is all separate CSV files, and I think uh, that that's that that's exactly where uh, Connect Leads comes in, which which is uh, we actually get instant notifications from Facebook that send us over real time notifications whenever someone enters a lead form, and this way we can make sure that that lead that lead that, that comes in goes straight into your autoresponder right away. So that, that way, if you connect it using Connect Leads, when someone clicks on the, on the lead ad right away, we'll send over the email to your autoresponder or whatever that system is, or to your, uh, for example, a webinar platform, and right away they'll get an email saying, hey, thanks, and here's your ebook, or here's your uh, webinar invite, or here's your video that we promised you, whatever you have promised them. So those are basically the two options, either um, a man export them manually and keep on doing that as, as often as you can think of, uh, which I would not recommend, but that's the uh, standard option. And the other option is to connect using a tool like Connect Leads and make sure that that's all automated into your uh, account, closing the gap between your uh, your Facebook lead ads and your um, and your autoresponder. Yeah, that just sounded insane to me when I when I was playing around with these lead ads. I was like, okay, cool. Where's all this information go? And it's like, 
oh no, you've just got to come in and get the CSV file. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make, that makes no sense whatsoever. Like from a marketing perspective, as you said, because people want that immediacy. They're like, oh yeah, I want this guide. And they're expecting it. They expect it to get it, you know, a minute or two later. And to have to go in and download CSV files. And as you said, if, if you have a number of these late forms running just a split test or whatever, you're going to have, you know, dozens of different CSV. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm assuming that's why you created Connect Leads in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's switch gears and talk about that a little bit. All right. So obviously this is a show about marketing automation and we want to, we want to get those leads into our autoresponder sequence or into our marketing automation platform so that we can follow up with those leads. So you're saying with, with a tool like connect leads, you're using the, the Facebook API. Is that correct? To just push those, yes. push Facebook the- ads API. They have like two different APIs. One's like the standard API. And this one is just for the ad- advertised API, a different kind of API. Okay, yep. cool. So you're just using that Facebook ads API to get it to talk to, you know, in my particular case, active campaign, but that could be, you know, any number of different autoresponders. So that, so that, Facebook's just, whenever someone signs up and says, yeah, I want your lead magnet, that just pushes across straight into your autoresponder of choice. Is that right? Yes, exactly. They'll send over all the email addresses to our servers, and then we collect that, and then we send it over in turn into any of the autoresponders. Yep. And then uh, I know this for a fact because I was playing with it just yesterday, but I think the great thing about it, too, if you're using Active Campaign, and I don't know what other what other systems you do this with, but you can also add a tag of your own as that information goes across. Is that right? Yep, that's correct. Every auto responder that supports that, we added that in there. So you can easily, uh, for example, with with get uh, active campaign, you can add multiple tags in, in case it's easier. And uh, yeah, that's one hundred percent correct. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's the feature that everyone who doesn't like. There's tons of people who integrate with Active Campaign, but the ones who don't actually know how to use the tool properly, they just go, "Oh yeah, you can just add people to a list," and it's like, well. Yeah, but I don't want to have a hundred lists. I just want to have one <laughs> segmented by tags, right? It's the whole it's the whole purpose in the first place. So exactly. the fact that you guys are smart enough to to add tags was really a great feature in my eyes there. So for those I've, of us- I've been following you for a long time. So what else can you can you expect, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad someone's listening. But yeah, so for those listeners out there who might not know what we're talking about, is you want to add someone to your list. So if someone's opted in for your lead magnet via one of these lead ads. Obviously, you want to add them to a list, but you want to follow them up with whatever the most appropriate automation or whatever the pro- most appropriate follow-up sequence is for that particular download. So if you're running three different lead ads, you know, lead ad A, lead ad B, lead ad C, there's going to be different automations behind each one of those to deliver that auto- to deliver that information to the customer, to the lead. So you could say, right, when someone clicks on lead ad, a, we're going to tag them with, you know, lead magnet A, so that knows which automation to fire inside Active Campaign. So that automation will be fired based on the presence of that tag, which is nice. But everyone gets added to the same list, which is exactly how it needs to happen, which I think is super, super cool. So tell us a little bit, of, a little bit more about um, Connect Leads. How did you, how did you decide that you were going to go out and build this thing? I can understand well, the actually, pain and why you wanted to do it, but yeah, it's a yeah, bit, actually, bit of a step the exact same. Exact same as you are. Like, like, like we said just before the interview, we talked about that we're, we're like sort of the same kind of people who like to test things out, you know, and, and, and see things, how it works and see, you know, yeah, just test things out. And, and, and the exact same thing happened to me when I, when I saw the uh, Facebook lead ads coming along, they were just being released and I figured I'm going to try it out. And I ran into the exact same problem uh, as you did. So I was like, this is, this is insane. And then um, because I've been I've, I've been uh, creating Facebook products before, I'm, I'm sort of familiar with their as API with their API documentation. So I went looking and see, and then I noticed that they actually uh, created a new section in their documentation, which basically explains how to uh, how to set this up, right? How to uh, do this in an automated way if you have fa- Facebook Ads API access, which we as a business uh, were approved to just prior to that. So. Um, th- then I started uh, reading more, and, and I realized that they actually did it on purpose that they only created a CSV expert because they don't want to hassle with all the auto responders out there. I mean, you're advertising on Facebook. I'm sure you'll, you're, you're familiar with the custom audiences where people can just upload a CSV file with uh, their email address, right? That, that's exactly the same thing. It's, it's like you have to do it all manually. Well, obviously, they could do it in an automated way, but they don't. They only allow MailChimp. And that's the only thing that they did, and they have been, they've been doing that for years. And the reason for that is because they allow their their uh, their developers 
like to, to create a third party platform to do that for them. So instead of them having to worry about it, they'll just provide a uh, they'll just make it ha- make it possible for third party developers to create tools uh, so that tools like for example connect leads can add it in. So when I when I saw that I was like, all right, this is something that not only I need but obviously the market needs as well. So that yeah, I think that's enough of a reason for me to uh, to uh, start working on it right away basically yeah very cool and i guess you must have had a software development background before that yeah well actually we have i have a team i have a team of developers so i wouldn't be able to pull it off myself uh just me me so we have a team of um because we are we are into software we focus on just a few products and like it's all software that's all we do um so obviously this is our this is sort of our our thing (laughs) and if you call it like that yeah yeah i guess it's pretty smart on facebook's part as you said like you know they there's hundreds of different systems they have to interface with so they just get guys like you to do the heavy lifting for them and they just say right we'll open the api you guys go make the products off you go and then they don't have to have they don't have to hassle with creating a hundred different connections to a hundred different systems exactly with changing apis and all of that (laughs) yeah very cool and the the other the other tool in your toolkit there uh, along with connect leads is something called connect audience I, i haven't had a play with that yet can you tell me what that does Sure. It's, in a way, it's actually the exact opposite. It doesn't have anything to do with with, uh, with your Facebook lead ads, but it has to do with the custom audience. So if you're advertising on Facebook, you can you can target an audience, right? You can say oh, everyone who is living in New York and who is a fan of Coca-Cola, for example. But they also allow you to create a custom audience, which means that you can upload a CSV file with, for example, all your customers, right? So you can just upload it and then Facebook will start recognizing all these email addresses and see if they can match to a Facebook profile. So from that point on, you can actually show advertisements to that custom audience, which are your customers, right? Or for example, everyone who subscribed to your email list. But just like with lead ads, that's only manual. So yeah, you'll have to download all these CSV files from your autoresponder and then upload it into Facebook as a custom audience. And that's actually what Connect Audience It synchronizes your, your autoresponder, for example, active campaign, and just sends it over to your ad uh, as a custom audience to your uh, to your Facebook ads account. So you can then start advertising to that to for example everyone who subscribed on your list or for example everyone who has opened a certain a certain email from you uh, recently very cool so it's pushing all the the emails that are inside active campaign it's pushing those up into facebook to create a custom audience based on those exactly exactly and you can go as detailed as you want you can say well everyone i, I send out an email everyone who has opened this email but who did not click on the link for example or maybe those who did receive it but who did not open the email for example. so you can just segment out which part of your new letter you want to you want to use as a custom audience and you can just push that into um, into facebook ads as a custom audience oh that's brilliant then you could so you could you know the, the typical scenario is is you know you run a webinar for example and you're going to have kind of three three people three segments of the audience that you want to retarget after the webinar so hopefully at the end of the webinar there's four there's four different segments of customers there's the people who attended the webinar and bought your product at the end which is good we don't have to worry about chasing them up again. But then you can have those people who didn't attend, signed up but didn't attend. You can have those people that um, signed up and left halfway through. And then you can have those people that signed up, stayed the whole time, but didn't buy. So you say you could, as long as those people are tagged inside your your system, like Active Campaign, if they're tagged inside Active Campaign, you could push those three segments up as three different custom audiences and you could run ads to those three different custom audiences differently. Yeah. Exactly, oh, but just just sure. one but just to, because active campaign is actually the only the only one that like uh, for example with a fusion shop that's exactly right with active campaign you can segment on a lot of things except for tax uh, right now yeah and we're we're depending on the active campaign uh, API and they said they're working on it so it should be should be coming but right now we cannot read. Who's uh, get who has a certain? We can, basically we cannot get a list of all the people who has a certain tag or something like that. So that's currently for active campaign. It's the exception where you cannot use tags. You can use a lot of other things, but not tags. Uh, for the, all the other systems, you can uh, that allow tags that you can use tags. But for for uh, for active campaign, it's basically uh, have they received the email? Have they opened a certain email? Have they clicked on the link? Have they are they in a certain automation? You can say that. Okay. Uh, so, but tax is not yet supported by active campaign. Well, they, the you, second will be there. You could okay. Well, you could still get around that. You could have them all in a certain automation. Could you do it with list segments or not? Uh, no, no. no. But, Subscribe yeah. to a list, but not a segment right now. So you could break those people up into three different lists then and do it that way. For example. Yep. Yeah. And well, like I said, this is for active campaign. For example, if you're using Infusionsoft, you can just use tax and anything you want. Cool. Very cool. 
All right. So let's say somebody wants to get started with lead ads tomorrow. Like someone's going, hey, this lead ad stuff sounds pretty cool. How do you get started? Like, what's the first Yeah, well, every Facebook advertiser has access to it right now. So if you are a Facebook advertiser, you'll have to go into the Power Editor. So uh, this means you have to use Google Chrome and then go to facebook.com slash ads slash manage slash Power Editor, uh, or just go into your normal editor and then click on Power Editor because this feature is only uh, available in the Power Editor. You'll have to create a new campaign. And then where you select the objective, you'll have to select lead generation. Um, and if you, once you select that, uh, you can go to your, uh, create that create that campaign and go into your ad set. And from there, you select your Facebook page where you want to run it on. Uh, and this is all the exact same as any other ad. And then if you actually start editing the ad, then you'll see that you can create a lead form. It will show up because uh, with a red line around it because you'll actually have to create it. Just click there and then you just follow the steps. It will ask. Uh, it will ask you uh, what data do you want to uh, do you want to get? For example, the name and email address. Uh, you'll have to enter in a privacy policy on your uh, that's hosted on your own website, and you'll en- enter enter in the link where you want people to be able to click on. Uh, after they signed up. So that could be your thank you page, for example, right? Or an extra offer or something like that. So yeah, all you need to do is go to the Power Editor, create a new campaign, select the campaign objective, lead generation. And from there, it's all, it's all, uh, yeah, you're good to go. You can create your lead ad and upload it to Facebook and it's working. Yeah, I'm no Facebook ads expert myself, but um, getting in there, following the instructions you guys had on your website, and just getting in there and doing it was a piece of cake. You know, I had it had an ad up and running connected to my autoresponder with uh, the correct emails going out in Lumba in, you know, like half an hour it was all done and dusted and started running ads. And I think someone signed up in like in the first 15 or 20 minutes. So <laughs> that works pretty good. I was uh, pretty impressed. There's obviously got to be some pitfalls in there. Some common mistakes that people make along the way. What have you seen there? Yeah, I think I think the most common mistake I see people make is they sort of treat these kind of ads the same as they did for any other ad. But the problem is that what, what normally if you would have an opt-in page, right? You, the, the only goal your ad has basically is to get people to click on it because you you'll convince them to sign up on your opt-in page. That's where you'll have extra benefits or you'll you'll make it clear what they will get exactly. So on the ad, you can just you know tease them a bit and, and, and make sure they want to click on it, make sure they, they want to click on it. But that's pretty much it. However, if you're doing the exact same thing for a lead ad, it's not going to work as well because in a lead ad, you'll have to be more descriptive. And what I mean with that is that you'll have to be Basically, it has to be clear what they will be getting from it. You don't just want them to click on it because they will still they'll still need to submit their email address, right? So you want to make sure they actually want to do that. So for, normally, you can just be you know teasing a bit and get them to click, and now you'll have to make sure that you want to make clear what they will get uh, once they subscribe. So they they already you have to do all the convincing in the actual ad, uh, for example. And one way I see people do that is if you start advertising, you can. Uh, obviously, you'll have your text and your and your image, just like any other ad. But what many people don't know is that you can create a lot of text in your ad. However, people it, it, people won't always see it. Like it, it it will create this view more link, right? On Facebook, will say view more. Yeah. Uh, but what I've seen people do is they just put a like they just have their ad like they normally have, and then they just keep on typing, and they'll they'll say something like, "Hey, you know." If you click subscribe, then here's what you get exactly. And then they list all the benefits of what they uh, of what what someone will get. Because some people might not be convinced right away from the ad, but they will still click on the uh, view more text, and then they will you know they'll, you'll still have more room of convincing. And so what sort of goes hand in hand with that is what I see people do. And this is more like in general for every ad actually, but also for lead ads is they sort of sort of try to speak in technical things or in features. But obviously you want to you want to talk in the end benefit, right? You want to talk about what the end benefit is of what you're giving away. You don't want to say, hey, do yeah, you, you want to join this cool webinar? Like you want to say, hey, we're going to teach you X, Y, and Z. We're going to make sure that you'll double your results while spending less time or whatever. You want to remove a problem. You want to really focus on the end benefit and don't just speak in technical benefits. I, I think that goes for every ad or for every marketing uh, marketing uh, mail that you're putting out. But I think I think that that's something I've seen quite a few people do wrong as well, I'd say, when I uh, was going through some of our uh, customers' ads. Yeah, you've got much less real estate to convince someone, I guess, than you would on a traditional landing page, for sure. Um, exactly. And then we might close out on this, actually, because I was tell- telling a lot of people about this because I think it's pretty cool, which is obviously why I want to get you on here. I think it's a great way to, to get leads into your business. But, but a lot of people I talk to you, we're like, oh, this has got to be some sort of Facebook hack and Facebook's going to find out about it and shut it all down tomorrow. So maybe you can speak to, you know, Facebook's involvement in this and, you know, how well they're embracing vendors like yourself who are coming up with these solutions. 
Yeah, sure, no problem. So, so first of all, like the, the Facebook lead ads, it's obviously just like just a Facebook feature. It's actually uh, created by Facebook. So that like the lead ads on itself is obviously uh, that's that goes outside of what we're doing, and that's uh, an official feature. You'll see it on the Facebook blog. You'll see it. They'll, you know, they'll they'll have it mentioned and featured anywhere else. And in terms of uh, developers like myself, I can sort of give you and give you an idea of how that actually works because the truth is i've been like as a business i, I we create products and over the last couple of years we've been trying a couple of times to create uh, to get the facebook ads api access right because it's really hard to get and uh earlier on you'll have, the only way you would you would, you, you would be able to get it if you would serve uh some really big enterprise customers and i i'm, I'm not talking about spending 100k a year i'm spending about way bigger uh, way bigger um, uh, ad spends in order to be even considered for that. Now, earlier this year, earlier 2015, they changed their uh, they changed their uh, guidelines for that, and they said, "All right, we we start we start allowing other ad developers, but uh, basically we're not going to make it easy for them, but it is possible." So basically, they created a three part process, and first of all, you'll have to build out uh, a full product uh, which uses the Facebook Ads API platform. You'll have to do that without knowing whether they're going to approve you, but you'll have to build it in full, and then after you've, you're done, you can contact them and they will test it out. They will see if it all works, if it's all good. And then they say, all right, it's working good. You'll get approval number one. I'll just keep it short. I'll approve number one. And then they say, now you can use it up to 25 customers, right? Now then you've got to start using it. And then they'll keep track of how many people, uh, how they use it and how much ad spend they use and whatever it's going to improve and, and things like that. Then after after a while, you can uh, you, you reach the status number two. And that's when they say, all right, now we're going to really dig in. And that's when they're going to, you know, they want to know everything about your business. Who's working there? You, they want to know your numbers. They want to know. Everything, everything they could possibly ask you, basically, and 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 then after uh, that's when they that's when they make a decision whether uh, the tool and whether your business is approved to use their ads API platform. And uh, we're like in constant contact about things. Like also, we we uh, if if someone, for example, uh, breaks the rules, breaks the phrase with terms of service, we also uh, remove them from our platform. So, for example, uh, one thing that's not allowed with Facebook lead ads is that you're that you're reselling your data, right? You cannot just get those lead ads and just resell all those leads to third parties. That's not allowed. And if people do that, um, obviously Facebook bans them, but we remove them uh, from our system as well. So we there's all kinds of rules that we have to commit to in order to make this work, which you obviously have all the intention of, of doing because that's the only way uh, to work together on this long term. So I think that's sort of a long answer to the um, to the to a short question, but I just wanted to give an idea of how the you hope uh, of how the whole process works and that it's all uh, yeah fully approved by by Facebook themselves. Yeah, and that ad API is not something somebody can just get access to. If they, it's, it's got to be approved and and watched over by Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, well, I really appreciate you coming on and explaining that to us. Because, and I think uh, anybody who runs Facebook ads, this is really kind of a game changer to get them straight into your autoresponder straight from Facebook on a mobile device. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Because that mobile segment is only going to keep growing uh, as time goes by. So, where can people find out more about Connect Leads and get in touch with you? connectleads.io that's the easiest way get in touch with me i don't like a lot of people ask me hey, what's your personal website and like i just haven't i've never really gone around but i have a blog which i used to blog at years ago but not really active which is emarkey.net but it's not really like it's i think the last post is a couple of years back maybe i'm not sure uh, so i don't really have a personal site but you can if you if you look me up you google me or we'll go to try you'll find me on facebook linkedin or uh, twitter etc cetera, etc cetera. um uh, but yeah, Connect Leads, you'll get that at connectleads.io. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. And I would urge everybody to check it out. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. All right. Thanks, Wilco. Thanks for having me, Barry. Thank See you. Yeah. I'd like to thank Wilco for coming on the Active Marketer podcast and sharing with us how Facebook lead ads work and how you can use Connect Leads to get those leads put straight from Facebook right into your active campaign account or pretty much any other autoresponder marketing automation software you might have. Connect Leads can integrate with just about everything. And another good thing about Connect Leads, not, this is not a pitch. I'm not an affiliate. I get no money for this. I just thought it was a great tool. But another great thing that Wilco does is inside his area, once you've signed up and paid for Connect Leads, is a lot of training videos that show you exactly how to get started with Facebook lead ads and Connect Leads in particular. So I want to thank him for coming on, sharing all that great information. It really is a great way to get leads into your business. And I want to thank you, the listener, for coming on and spending your time with the Active Marketer podcast and all our 
fantastic guests. I would love it if you could head over to iTunes or Stitcher and leave us a review. And just like the beginning of this show, I'll read it out on a future episode. Those reviews in iTunes help our rankings and help get the podcast more visible to more people so more people can use marketing automation just like you're putting it to work in your business. So I would really appreciate it if you want to head over there and leave us a review. At the beginning of the show, I mentioned a special offer, and here it is. I have been talking to a lot of you through email, through Skype calls, and in our Automation Nation private Facebook group. And if you're not in there, head over to Facebook right now, type in Automation Nation, click join, tell us you heard about it on the podcast, and you're in. We talk about all things marketing automation, sales funnels, tips, tactics, techniques. We solve problems. People share their experience. It's really an exciting community. There are lots and lots of smart people in there. When I started The Active Marketer, I really started it with kind of one key focus in mind, and that was to get marketing automation in the hands of every business owner who wanted to know how to do it. When I started this journey, my own journey, a couple of years back, there was zero information. It was really mysterious. It was all back-end stuff that only the big guys did. And I learned through tons of trial and error and playing around and, no, this doesn't work. There was really just nowhere to go for me to learn. And I think a lot of you are having that same experience now, even with the Active Marketer and our private Facebook group and the podcast. A lot of you are still running into snags. A lot of you still haven't had the light come on yet, and you want a little bit more education, a little bit more coaching, and a little bit more guidance. So I think I really need to step up my game in my crusade to get sales and marketing automation into the hands of everyone to make it approachable to every business owner. So I've got something really exciting planned for the new year, and that is a private coaching community. It's going to be the community. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be the community I always wished was around when I started. I don't want you to have to go through all the trials and errors and mistakes that I went through. And I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing this right now. So, and a lot of you even asked for this inside Automation Nation. So what this is going to be is it's going to be a private coaching community where we can talk to each other, where you can get direct access to me. We'll have shared automations in there that you can download, put straight into your business in a matter of minutes. We're going to have swipe files that you can put to use inside your business. We're going to have funnel blueprints easily implementable action plans so that you know exactly the steps you need to take to make this all happen. We're going to have regular coaching calls because I think that's really the secret sauce. It's great for me to provide you all these training videos and PDFs and stuff, but I think sometimes you just really need someone to explain it to you. And that's why I started this whole thing in the first place. So I'm really going to pick up my game. We're going to have regular coaching calls where we talk about specific tactics, specific techniques, how you put this to you. You have the opportunity to ask me questions and we're going to do something really exciting, which is we're going to have member hot seats, right? So this is a really great way to learn. If you brave enough to put your hand up, we're going to put you in the hot seat and myself and fellow members are going to grill you on what your tactics are to get you really super tight in what your message is, what your product is, what your funnel is. And I think it will be a great learning experience for everybody involved. And we're also going to talk about how do you automate the back end of your business processes as well? It's great that you get everybody funneling in and buying stuff, but then how do you deliver that? How do you automate the back end of your business so it's as efficient as possible and you can deliver as many customers as you can? And how do you scale that up and how do you scale out your team? So we're not only going to be talking about the front end sales and marketing stuff and what you do with people once they're opted in or what they bought, but how you can actually scale your business, right? How you can make automate all the processes in your business so that you can put on other team members and maybe spend less time doing the drudgery and more time doing the things you love within your business. So I'm really excited about this and I hope you'll join me on this journey. So here's the special offer. If you head over to the URL I'm going to mention in a minute, you can sign up for early access. It's not going to cost you anything. I'm just gathering a tribe of people who are super interested in this. So head over to the page, put in your name and your details. And when the community is ready, hopefully by kind of the end of January, when this community is ready, because you guys are putting your hand up early, you'll have early access to special founder rates. So if you put your hand up and say you want into this community, you're going to get locked in at a special founder's rate for taking a chance with me, and I'm going to reward you with that. The price of this community is going to go up over time, and it's going to go up pretty quickly as we jam more and more resources into this community and we get a lot of more momentum going. But you'll be locked in at the special founder's rate forever. So if you join us as one of our founding members, 
that's the rate you're going to pay for the rest of your life. As long as you stay in that community, the cost to you is never going to go up. New members are certainly going to pay more, but you founding members who are, who are taking action are going to be locked in at that special price. So there'll be more information on the community coming soon. But in the meantime, if you want to head over to the activemarketer.com forward slash special offer, put your details in there. And when the community is ready, we get a little bit closer. I'll let you know what that special founders price is going to be. And I'll let you in at a special sneak peek to the community. And also you founders get to drive the direction of the community. So you get to tell me what you want me to build into that community and we'll go out and do it for you. So I'm really, really super excited about this and I hope you are as well. So head over to theactivemarketer.com forward slash special offer and put your hand up. Until next week, I want you to get out there and design, automate and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. See you next time, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.